Welcome back. I see a lot of people have taken care of filling out the daily report. And for those of you who didn't get a chance, make sure that you do the evaluation for our instructor, Grace Jones, today. And if you're finishing up, just remember to type done into the chat box when you are finished completing those forms. The daily reporting is something great to just bookmark and save so that you can revisit it every day as you continue on through Ignite Spark and then also into Elementals. Reminder, you can always go back on later in the day and update your numbers. If you forgot to do it yesterday, feel free to go ahead and add those numbers to today so they will be in your total for the whole training. If you forgot to do the teacher evaluation, the instructor evaluation yesterday, you can use the same link and just select the instructor from yesterday and complete that as well. Again, this is all helpful for us as we continue to develop the Ignite virtual program for our region and then also for your market center leadership. So I'm gonna take a few minutes to review what I actually talked about last week because I was an instructor twice on Wednesdays, which is the topic of creating the DocuSign room and adding contacts to the room. So please let me know if you have not ever created an opportunity. Feel free to just say, I haven't done one or type it in the text um, in the chat box. I have a, a team member from our office that helps with the technology training. Michael Henry and he's going to be helping me monitor the chat box. It's hard for me to see when you're doing the thumbs up um, or raising the hand using the reactions. So just keep that in mind. I started out playing my favorite song joy and pain because I do feel that command can bring us joy and it can bring us pain. So Kimberly, I think you wanted to ask something. Go ahead, hon. Maybe not. Anybody else not created an opportunity? Okay, cool. So I'm going to share my screen. Yeah, nothing in the chat, Christy. Awesome. So I'm just going to do a, a real quick overview just to remind you of the steps. If you're like me, it takes two or three times to um, get solid in, in what you're doing. And um, oops, sorry, I collect on campaigns instead of opportunities. So again, opportunities is the handshake. And you want to make sure that you have the person that you are using to create the opportunity already in your database. And a great way to do a test run is to enter a contact with a fake name like Minnie Mouse, Donald Duck, and use your personal email so that you can see what your clients are going to be getting. I'm going to use my husband today and I'm going to select under the opportunity type that this is a buyer. And then remember anything with the red asterisk is a required field. Oftentimes with buyers, we aren't sure if we're going to be 
getting paid um, 2.4% or 3%. And so when I start the opportunity, I just plug in the lesser so that if I get anything more than what I am expecting in this, it's a bonus in a way. Um, it doesn't hurt against my numbers or work against my numbers. And then again, for the phases, depending where you are in the process, um, I usually do not create the opportunity as religiously as I should. When you add that contact, if you've had a two-way conversation about continuing to talk about them becoming um, either a buyer or a seller, it's a good idea to go ahead and put them in an opportunity right away. And of course, if you are starting at a later point where you're setting the appointment, then you can put them into that stage. And you're going to click create and then it's going to take you to an overview where you can make sure that you fill in as much information as you can on the general general information tab. And if you have anything in mind as far as dates, you can fill those in and you edit by clicking on the small pencil on the right. For a buyer, you may not know the property address. If it is a seller, you can fill that information in right from the beginning so that it's easy and you don't have to go back and redo it. And then under documents is where you will start your transaction. So I just wanted to clarify, I had an agent ask me the other day where this menu is. If you log into an opportunity and you don't see the option to upload your files for compliance review, just come over here to the left and pick which list you're going to be using. Of course, if you're doing a residential, you'll choose that versus commercial or vacant land. And then that will give you all of the files for uploading to submit to the Market Center for Compliance. And then to go into the DocuSign piece, you will start a transaction and choose DocuSign. And then this now moves us from command into DocuSign. And keeping in mind that DocuSign talks with Command, but it is two totally separate programs. You do want to go into DocuSign from Command, especially if you are just starting out. You don't want to create a DocuSign account and then try to come back later. When you are in DocuSign, you want to fill out, again, as many of these details under the Details tab on the far left, making sure that the more um, information that you have, the better, and that it's added there. And it uses the same little icon on the far right with the pencil for Edit. And sorry, I needed to move all of your lovely faces over a little so I could see. Then you're ready to move on to the documents where you're going to be adding from your files. So you go under the plus for add, DocuSign forms, and depending how your Market Center has this library set up, you can choose either from your Market Center forms or you may also need to pull some things from other files like your Realtor Association. So that's where I find most of my forms, like my- hey, Christy, Christy one thing I'd like to add there while you're in there, in the event that you have a form that you've gotten from uh, the other side of the transaction, in this, in this tab on documents, you can drag and drop um, that tab in there as well, just so, you know, if you have it down in the bottom downloaded, you can just drag and drop it right in there if it's something that's already been formatted that you just have to add your side signatures to, such as a, a disclosure or um, a MOG or something along those lines. Yeah, so I have um, our compliance checklist actually done here in a PDF. If I just drag, like Michael's saying, and pull it up, then I can Usually I can just drop it right in. Maybe it's not downloaded. Yeah, uh, yeah. Usually you can just do it right there. I don't know quite know yet. 
maybe because it wasn't it may not have okay. <laughs> the file there was an issue okay that makes sense <laughs> scared me for a second <laughs> um so any questions about that first couple of steps of just creating the documents and filling in the information Okay, everybody feels pretty comfortable with all that. One, one question. Sure, Shay. So when I go to my DocuSign, it's blank. I don't see, let me go back. I didn't see the, sorry. That's okay. Hello? Hello? Mm -hmm. You log me out. I'm sorry. I actually closed it on accident. Yeah, too much, too many tabs open. But so when I go to the dashboard and I go to my docs. I, when I go to add, it just says create folder. Like I don't have like things inside of mine. Um, are you talking about in the library? Are you, are you doing Zoom on your computer? Could you share your screen so I could see what you're seeing? Sure. Okay. Yeah, that'd That's awesome. great. Let's do that. So down at the bottom, you can just do share screen and then pick that browsing window where you have command open. And I know we talked about this briefly before as Shay's um, sharing. If you are not using Chrome Incognito when you're using command, we highly recommend it. Command seems to work the best in that setting. For, was Chrome, so put it in, I was opening Chrome instead. Good, so go, so you're saying when you go to add, Hmm, looks like yours. Go under forms and see if there's any. Yeah. There. So I was going to say left is forms. My computer's slow. Oh, gotcha. Okay, you're spelling a little differently. Okay, so that, okay. And that's the buyer. Okay, I was under the wrong, I guess I never hit forms. So, yeah. No worries. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. So a question I know that just popped up is about why Google Chrome incognito. And that is honestly because it does the best job of clearing the cache and the browsing history so that you can keep moving in a way. It doesn't clog it up as much as if you were just using regular Google Chrome, but the incognito window, which is simply going under file at the top, and clicking new incognito window. And I keep my um, command in that incognito window and then I keep my email and things separate in a, in a separate browser. Hopefully that helped answer that question, Kimberly. Yeah, and the big reason where that came up initially was because the fact that the things in command were changing so quickly that if your computer didn't, didn't go grab the latest version, it was causing issues. So to kind of circumvent that, we, we do the incognito to make sure. I mean, you can, there. don't get me wrong, there's times that you can use the regular window and not have an issue, um, but that's the main reason behind it, so. Okay, awesome. Well, we can actually move on to Q&A. Um, she kind of started us rolling there with a quick question about the folders in DocuSign. So certainly let us know if there's anything that you have questions for DocuSign or command itself, and we can just fire through with um, the Q&A part of our Ignite today. One question, not sure if this is, I'm just trying to figure out for logos, are logos in command or is that somewhere else? 
Sure. So you, um, your market center, you'll be able to find logos that are specific to your market center. Um, when you go under the designs, which is, it looks like an iPad with a stylist and you are creating, like I created this, um, just sold Facebook ad and there will get, it will give you the option. And I think it will automatically upload two or three of your market center logos under the logos image on the far left. And a lot of those you can just replace by clicking on and getting the white handles where the logo currently is and then coming over to the logo and doing the recycle looking icon for replace logo. Okay. Is there a difference in, I see it says Keller Williams Elite Realty. Is that like, I'm, is that a, does that matter? Yours should have your logos. Oh, sorry. Okay. For your market center. And Michael, I know there's a, a link somewhere. Um, I can try to find it if you want to keep with the yeah. questions and answers um, okay. where you can type in your market center number and it will pull them up for you. Yeah, it's been a bit since I've been in, in there to actually get the, the, the MC logo. So yeah, if you want to do that, I'll keep an eye on the, on the chat room. Anybody else have any additional questions? Uh, we, we do have the next question. I have a question. How do you make the docs live so that my clients could sign the documents? Okay. Um, what we can do is, Christy, how long do you think you're going to be, um, since you have yours open, to go through and, and show how to add signatures? If not, I can open one up if, it's, if, it, if you're going to be a second. Um, yeah, I was going to have to search a little bit, but I'll tell okay. you what. Yeah. I'll come back to it if you want okay. me to do that. Yeah, it's up to you. Hey, Christy, while you're there, can you show again how to, um, how to go, get to incognito Chrome? Sure. Um, the only problem is I don't know that you can, can you see my Chrome menu at the top that says file? I do. Okay, great. So when you open Chrome, you'll just come under file and then do new incognito window. And it will automatically open a new browser window for you. And also, I believe, Christy, you can, you can try this. If you click those three dots over right beside where it says incognito, I mm -hmm. think also is another way that you can get a new window that's incognito as well. So there are a couple different ways, um, but uh, that's kind of how you get to it. We also had another thing, uh, wanting the differentiation between the rooms and the envelopes. So essentially, the room is where you're going you're gonna to work on the form piece while she's pulling it up. And the envelope is going to be primarily the signature piece of it is that's kind of the difference of it. It's kind of broken up into two different segments before the system that we had um, with that loop was everything was just one, one place. But here it's kind of, it's kind of broken up into two subsets. One, the, the form piece and the second, um, which is in the room. And then the second, which is the signature piece, which is to be in the envelope and which is what we're going to go through next. So so that was your question, right? Of stepping it through for signatures? Correct. Then the difference between the different between the room and the envelope. So if we can just go through one and submit it for signatures, I think would be the uh, kind of where we would be best for the room. Okay, great. Sounds good. So um, I'm going to open And when you're in your room, <clears throat> excuse me, and you're under your documents. Oops, sorry about that. Oops, that closed. All right, hang on just a second. Let me try this again. Um, so when you're in your room and you're under your documents, there's going to be a small circle in the left hand, upper left-hand corner. And when you click 
on the actual document, you can do the editing. But when you're ready to do the part of either downloading or signing, you're just going to check that box. And typically, there's a little menu that shows up right here. Yeah, I'm waiting on the, the piece for. <laughs> hmm. With the signature pen. And I'm not sure why it's not loading. Let's try to refresh that. There we go. Okay. There it comes. Okay, so you're going to use that checkbox to pick which document it is that you need to have signed. And then you're going to go under the pen, which is for signatures, where you'll do the signing. And this is where it's then going to take you into preparing the envelope. So you're actually taking that document, and if you're thinking old school mailing a paper copy, you're taking that document and you're putting it into the paper envelope. I found that it's helpful to change the name of the envelope so that later when you go back to look, they're not all named the same thing. So you can't remember what was that that I sent. Yep. <laughs> you have to open them all. Yeah, and that, and that top section where she's at is the name of the envelope. And then if you scroll down, it'll be also the, the formatting of the, um, what you're sending to your client. Um, so it, for instance, if you wanna be able to, to differentiate between the working with real estate agents versus uh, offer to purchase or uh, whatever the forms may be. So there's two places where you where I recommend that you change those to indicate what you're sending. After you've added your documents, and you can add more than one, you can be se sending two documents at the same time. And you can um, apply, oh, and this one, I'm sorry, this one doesn't have the pre-tagged roles. But if you apply the pre-tagged roles, it will give you the option to go ahead and assign who are your signers. And so since mine didn't have pre-tagged roles because I've already done this, um, I'm just going to do add recipient. Yeah, the nice part about using the pre-tagged role tab when you're, when you're selecting the recipients is everything is automatically formatted for that, those specific roles and it will save you a lot of time in creating the document. And of course you can add a message. I'm just gonna write something real quick. And then when you click next, it takes you to the screen where it will do the tagging of the initials or the signatures for you. And so that gives you an overview of the difference between the envelope that's when it, there's the actual signing piece and the room where the documents are all stored, almost like the filing cabinet, if you will. Uh, Shay has a question. Um, is the working with real estate agent uh, brochure located here? Uh, again, I, I would recommend that you go back to uh, your market center leadership um, they can tell you those specific questions. I know for us, ours, it is. Um, I believe it's like um, 160, I believe, for if you're in the triangle. Um, but again, I don't know in your situation. Again, it's because of the variances, um, I, I would recommend going back to that to see exactly where yours is located. And I had an agent ask me yesterday about using a digital copy like this versus using a pamphlet for the working with real estate agents. And I do use the paper copy that I send digitally. I don't buy one at the MLS and hand out a, a glossy brochure. I just send it all electronically. Um, I know we talked about open houses this morning. And if you are doing an open house, it is a good idea to have a working with real estate agents brochure with you. So that if you meet someone and you start talking about some substantial information, um, you can go ahead and have that paper copy for them to sign right there with you. Um, so Shay, as Michael said, ours are, are here under the DocuSign forms under our North Carolina Realtor Association. You may also have it under your Market Center file or folder um, that we had looked at a few minutes ago. Um, we have a couple other questions in the chat that I'd like to, to kind of bring up as well. Uh, is the contract auto fill in? 
So in the example that she gave was a form that she had already submitted for signature. So that one is not, but if you go with a typical form, it's going to have it basically prompted uh, for the specific role. Can you show one that's, that's a buyer agency that has not been formatted, Christy? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. I think, it, I think that, would, that uh, would, would work well for the group. And then there's another question while you're doing that. Uh, how do we know which forms are required for each side? Again, you know, when it comes to the specifics, um, obviously there's the slots in, um, in command that show, but there are so many different ones there uh, for those different documents um, that obviously you don't use for each specific transaction. So again, that would be a great question uh, for your market center leadership to make sure that you have the ones. I know for us, it's specifically, you know, we have the working with real estate agents for buy side and sell side um, and then buyer agency agreement um, and then the disclosure docs and so forth. So, but again, I would, I would defer back to, you know, what, what your requirements are for your market center, because again, we've got a couple of different states that are represented here and we definitely don't want to give you information that's misleading and, and then cause an issue. So. So this is one of my um, test rooms and here's the exclusive buyer agency agreement. Instead of doing the checkbox, I'm just going to click right on the document and it will open up for me and I'll be able to edit the fields. And you can see that you can click on each of those small rectangles where the text needs to go and you can type in things like the date and and i will say some of this information if you fill it if you fill it out thoroughly in command some of it will port from command to docusign and then into your docs i know when we first started it was very few fields because they were testing those out one to make sure that they were functioning like they should um, but I know uh, since then, more of that information is, is coming from command to DocuSign to your docs, so you don't have to uh, duplicate, enter as much information. So some of that will automatically port over if you fill, it, fill it in the fields um, way back where you uh, create the contact. Yes, and coming under and making sure that you fill out um, all your details. Yeah, and then again, to get that, to make sure that it comes over, then you check it at the details tab and where the seller inf seller buyer information is on the right, which yours may be covered by uh, mm. the, the DocuSign stuff like mine is. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Uh -huh. Yes. So um, yesterday we were filling out an offer to purchase and we had to click and drag all the initial signs and um, someone said, oh, there's a way to auto or save a template. Can you show me how to do that, please? So thank you. Um, I have to be honest with you. I have only done templates using zip forms because that's something that we are offered in North Carolina. And the only templates that I am able to create in DocuSigns are with documents that have been uploaded by my market center, like my affiliated business agreement or um, an airport noise, airport noise um, disclosure. But I will show you what Michael and I were talking about, which was the pre tagged roles. When you go to the signature part with clicking in the checkbox in the upper left and going under the pen. If you select the, in the envelope, the option to do pre-tagged roles under your recipient and you specify who the buyer is going to be. And I'll put myself in as the buyer's agent. Then when you click on next, those little initial tags will automatically populate. And I think that's more of what you're thinking about. When you create a template, it would automatically fill in things like your firm name or your license number, but it would not add these signature or initial tabs. Is that what you were, uh, you were asking about? It was, and now I see what we did. We didn't, um, back where it allowed you to select, um, I didn't do the pre-tagged exactly. selection. And so I had to go in and I was like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. 
and, Four, and 14, 14 pages of that fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, I did that yesterday. <laughs> and you'll remember the next time. Um, I will. <laughs> Thank for, you. For North Carolina, we have the option for buyers to designate if they want to have representation with our firm being a dual agent. And so when you get to this part of our buyer's agency, it leaves the buyer the option to choose which one of these three choices they want to have. And because they leave it as an option, oftentimes buyers will skip over them. So what I like to do is have a conversation with them before we fill out the, the paperwork. And if they agree, then I come through and I will select the first checkbox or the initial box for dual agent and come over here to the right and make it required. And that way it will change it from being just a, a white initial to a colored initial tag, which is the same color that represents the buyer. And then the one that they're not going to choose, which would be exclusive representation that they don't want dual agency, I just delete off by highlighting and then clicking delete. And then same thing if you're going to be wanting to change designated agent to a required initial, just come over to the right and click required field. And then if for some reason something was missed and you needed to add an additional initial, you can click on your name or your client's name in the upper left-hand corner. And then you can click and drag, which I'm sure is what you did yesterday to add that extra initial or signature or date signed. Um, some of the forms automatically include the date signed text. Um, our working with real estate agency does not. That brochure has to have the date signed added. So it's something that I have to remember to take and click and drag date signed and bring it over just like I'm doing now. There is a question in the chat. Is there a way to um, pre-fill document and reuse it on another client or is that what you just went over so and then just the, the agent and the initials um, so darling to answer your question um, yes from a form standpoint there's a way to do it like we just showed um, but if there's information that that never changes for you unfortunately with the way the system is set up unless it's something that that ports over from uh, your um, your marketing information um, that's the only things that will automatically populate. There is no way to, to create the form template unless you have it done through the market center in your, in that tab. So for certain forms there that you can do. Um, but again, that's why in North Carolina, we have the, the zip forms option that, that Christy and I both use because it, it allows you to create that template and kind of similar to what we used to have in dot loop. So and I hope I that answers your question. I was going to say, um, I, I will share that tomorrow afternoon, um, I'll look and see, I think it's at one o'clock, there is going to be a North Carolina tech trainer who is doing a training on DocuSign and using some level of templates. It may uh, be beneficial for you to check that out. And um, I'm going to stop sharing real quick so I can tell you, um, I'll put it in the chat, the exact information. And of course, it's going to be geared to documents that we have in North Carolina because it is a North Carolina tech trainer, but it may be something that you can apply to other states as well, just that your forms will be a little different. And then Michael, do you mind go ahead and logging in after I post this in the chat, then I will go look um, for that link for the office logos and how to find that. Yeah, we'll do um, a couple other in the, in the questions. If there are two sellers or two buyers, do they both have to initial for dual agency? Um, I believe, again, that's more of a big question, um, but I believe that answer is yes. But again, I don't want to say um, I am not a broker in charge, nor do I play one on television. So again, just, just verify that question with your, with your BIC, just again, different, different state and locales want to make sure that we're providing information that's accurate. So, um, she just posted that. How do you get signatures or initials put on a PDF file that you 
upload from your computer? Great question. So, um, for instance, I'm, I'm assuming that you're talking about a doc that was already already signed. So, give me just a second. I'm going to do go into the screen share, and I will show you how to upload docs that have already been filled out. You know, we talked a little bit about it earlier, but uh, I'll give you the full the full rundown. I just have to log on to um, command, and uh, I'll jump into screen share here as well. Great question so far, guys. I hope you guys find this beneficial. Um, and again, I know it can be a lot when you don't have the, you know, you don't, you haven't had the repetition, but I will tell you as you continue to use it, it becomes more comfortable and it's more intuitive. Uh, it's just a different process than maybe what you were used to, so. Um, Kimberly, I saw you ask the question about how do we know which forms are required for each side? And that's gonna be something that will come from your broker in charge and your compliance department in your market center. Our market center does have a checklist that they provide and some of them may be an optional document like a well and septic um, as some properties don't have wells. So just check in with your broker in charge and they will help you to know what that is required for their compliance. And I did post um, the training for DocuSign with Robert that's happening tomorrow at one o'clock with a Zoom meeting link. I know y'all are gonna be involved in Ignite again and it, um, it's gonna take a little bit of time onto your day, but he is definitely a DocuSign guru and I know he's gonna be covering some useful information if you have the chance to jump on. And then we'll let Michael um, share with you how to add the PDF and then I will take back the reins of doing the screen share um, and show you how to go through my KW to find the logos. Alrighty, I'm just getting a, I'm just gonna download a doc real quick. Uh, let's just for the sake of argument, pretend that that's a, a signed document. I'm gonna go back into, uh, into my opportunity. Unfortunately with the, this format, it kind of hides some of the, uh, some of the stuff that we need to see. So um, again, it's kind of blocking the, the ability. I'll just, I'll just open it up again, I guess. Jump into the transaction. So once you get back to the transaction piece, you, you went through command, now you're logged into, into DocuSign and uh, it's, mine's taking a bit. So give me just a second. So for instance, if this was a form that was, that was a PDF that had some signatures on it, um, if you need to put it, if you need additional signatures for your side, this is the way I'm gonna show you. If it's something that's already signed that you just need for the transactional piece for compliance, there's another way to do that. I'm gonna show you both of those because again, if you haven't done these, um, both are gonna be very uh, useful for you as you, as you move forward. So I um, wanna cover both. So for instance, this was, this was a form that was signed. As, as you can see, you know, Christy talked a little bit about naming the docs and envelopes. This is, a, this is an actual transaction that I'm working on and, and you can see it gets pretty messy. So anything that you can do to kind of make it clear of what is what is definitely gonna be beneficial for you. But again, if this was a document that again, that came from the other side that was um, disclosures that were signed by the sellers and then we needed our initials, you can just bring them in like this and you just basically just drag it and just drop it right in the room. And as you can see now it's a PDF uh, that is accessible for the um, for you to add signatures and so forth. So you'll you'll see the different colors in here. Uh, this is a good visual, I think, for you. So the the PDFs are going to be red. Anything that's been signed is going to be green. Anything that's a form that you can edit is going to be blue. So you, as you can see, the different ones, the different variations in there. So that's how you would do that. And for me, I do mine a little bit differently than, than Christy. I usually just jump into the envelope tab and then create the envelope from there. But again, they're just like a lot of what we can do, there's different paths to get to the same end result. So that's how, if you have that form um, and you need to add signatures, that's how you would bring it into here and do, do that. If it's a form, for, for instance, you, you know, again, you went old school and decided to have them sign it in there and you wanna bring it into, uh, into command for compliance, that's even easier. Um, I just got to find the tab. So for instance, if it is a, it, it is one of these that you have here. Um, um, I can't scroll down because now my window's in the way. Right, give me just a second. Move that up out of here. So um, in this situation, it's the buyer agency agreement. Oh, let's just go to one of these ones that hasn't been used. 
um, offer to purchase in this in instance, you want to add the file. All you have to do is click the add a file button and then it'll give you some different options to be able to add. You can add it manually, um, which will then uh, allow you to, if you hit this button here, um, oops, no, I didn't do that right. So yeah, if you click on it, then it allows you to go to your computer and do it like that. You can obviously do the drag and drop option here and just drag it and just drop it in there, which is the easiest way for me. I, um, I always forget where my, my files are located at. So uh, to do what I just did there is usually the, the route that I go. Or if it, again, if it's something that you have in a custom folder or somewhere else, uh, there's different options there. But again, either one of those will work. Again, you just drag and drop and you can see um, you have that and then just hit the assign button. Obviously, I don't want to add this here, so I'm not going to. Um, but uh, that's how you bring a document that you've signed uh, by hand or through some other method into, into the fold. All right, Christy, does that, did that answer your, your question? Or I think I covered both routes. I just wanna make sure that I had clarification on what you were looking for, is that correct? Yes, thank you. Perfect. Okay, so All I'm right. gonna jump back on and show you the MyKW page. So although um, this is not often talked about now that we have the great resource of command, it is a, a huge resource that is still actively updated. And if you come under mykw.kw, um, you can see, let me move my menu there, the technology. And, oh, I'm sorry. I clicked on the wrong thing. Um, it's marketing. And then you'll see in the drop down menu on the left, logos and branding. And this is where you can type in your specific market center logo. So you scroll all the way down to the bottom and you can type in your market center number, which if you didn't know it before, you know it now because we're always on your case about renaming yourself on here to get credit. And then you just will click download and they'll save it right to your downloads or you can do a preview and there will be um, a few there, if not um, one, two, or three. And then you'll also see that below that are the primary logos that are not branded to your specific market center. So you can download those as well. So Shay, I know you asked about being able to find those. Again, you should have some that are automatically in designs when you go into command. But if you're looking for some other things, this is a great resource to use. Again, it's mykw.kw. Um, I'm sorry, mykw.com, and then going under marketing and logos and branding. Can I ask you a question about that? Thank you so much for that. Sure. Um, my market center currently only has one logo downloaded like under our market center but there's other logos um how can i get those and put them under our market center in command uh that's a good question um which office do you work out of which market center uh the lake norman one okay um check do you know who your tech trainer is yeah okay uh -huh. Check with your tech trainer. I'm sure there's a way, I don't know how, but I'm sure there's a way that they can submit to have those updated and have more added. Um, so I would recommend that you reach out to them directly. Okay, great, thanks, appreciate it. Sure. Hey, and, Su and Susie, to answer your other question, um, you, you logged off to your KW app and, and can't log back in. Um, how do yeah. you, get, and you're not getting the reset email. I would check with your MCA on that, they may be able to, like for instance, depending on where your, your password resets are routed. Um, I had a, I had an um, agent in the office that we, we assisted yesterday and uh, we were able to kind of get that cleared up as to where those, there's, those go to. So if you haven't received it yet, I, I would check with your, your MCA, have her go back in and see what settings are, are there uh, to, to get that password reset back to you. So 
that in, does that it, uh, help there? Yes, thank you very much. Perfect. And then we have another question uh, from the chat. How can I search properties out of my state, uh, like in South Carolina for a client? And, and, and Lonnie, I believe you're along the right path there. If it's not something that you have MLS access to, you know, that's the great part about the KW Tech that we have. You have it right in your hand that you have the ability to search for stuff that's outside of your MLS through the KW app. So I would absolutely um, recommend that portion of it uh, to do, do some of that. The other option I think that you have, if you have contacts in that neighborhood, um, you know, if you have agents that you're, that you have relationships with, uh, they may be able to uh, provide you some information there. But if, if you don't have that, to me, that's a great start to, to, for your client. Okay. Thank you. I have a question. Sure. Is the Kelly app the same thing as the consumer app? Cause I've, no. Negative. Yeah. So, so the Kelly app is the K-E-L-L-E -L -L -E, and it's a teal color. And the Keller Williams consumer app is the one that has the KW and it is white with the red KW. The Kelly app is a sister of command. And the goal with those is that they are going to communicate with each other and to some level begin, become your command that is mobile. However, we did have a pause in the focus of the technology team and Kelly was not updated and improved upon for a short time. They have reinstated another task team to get back in helping Kelly and command um, and their communication so that we do have that mobile ability. But when you are talking about true consumer experience, that's going to be through Keller Williams app with the white and red KW. Yeah. Oh, yours is teal. You're muted. I can't hear you. I have it here. Like, does it look like this? Mm -hmm. Yes, yep. that's the consumer. Oh, the consumer. okay. Mm -hmm. And that's, and those credentials should not, because I, that I was, I have received an email. They said, make sure that those credentials are not yours. Because I, I made it, created it with my, how do I un- do that because I have my things on it. Like if I was to give it to someone else, they said don't use your Keller Williams credentials, but I had already did it. Um well you want it to be branded to you. Do right. you mean you have it branded to yourself? If you go under more, does it show yourself as your agent? Yes. Like yes. Is that correct? Yeah mine says it. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you, you want it to be that way so that when you share um, this app with another consumer, you would scroll down. So I was up here at the top where it had my name and came all the way down. There's an option near the bottom that says share. And you want to okay. go under the share. Oh, my yeah. Camera. So you do want it to be branded to you. That's correct. Okay, I'm not sure what they were saying. I guess, I don't know. I just was like, is it the Kelly app? But I'll go back to that email and see what they were speaking about. And we can yeah. share that with prospects, correct? Like that's, you can just send it to different people? Yes, and let me show you in command where you can find a link to that. Um, so if you wanted to do a Facebook post or you wanted to send an email from within command, Let's see here. If you go under on the far left at the bottom, consumer, you'll see in the right hand corner site and app settings. And oh, I think it's under URL. There it is. Under URL, this is my app URL that I can share. And then just copy and paste that into your application. Okay. We'll copy. 
copy and paste into tool or I'm trying to add it to like my Facebook um, business page. Yeah. Or if you wanted to do, you could do a Facebook post and designs and add your app URL in there. You can add it into an email. Um, you can even put it at the bottom with your signature, with your, you know, thanks, Shay, with your phone number, and then have your app link right there. Gotcha. And some people have used it with a QR code generator that you can just Google QR code generator and generate a QR code that will take them directly to this URL and use that if you're doing any kind of um, paper mailing or flyers or if you're door knocking, you can also do that route. So I'm, I'm trying to add documents in DocuSign Room and it's asking me for validate NRDS information and association. I don't see NC Association of Realtors anywhere in this list. Just click cancel and see if it will let it go past that. When we first started using commands in our area, we were not set up and had to require the NARDs, but I'm pretty sure now you'll be able to just um, say cancel and get right past it, James. Well, I was, I was trying to create a general room for listing documents so that I can edit them all and have them all ready just to forward and customize later on. Mm -hmm. And then when I hit add DocuSign forms, select forms provider realtor or northwest mls i hit realtor i enter my nrs or nrds id and then it asked me for an association north carolina is nowhere on here there's no way to bypass it i can't add documents without it so you're mm -hmm. are you in the mountains no i'm in charlotte i'm canopy charlotte okay um can we screenshot? It looks like a lot of these are states. Like there's Virginia, there's South Carolina, there's Tennessee. That's what I was just going to say, Michael. Can you screen share? Are you using this Zoom call on the computer? No, but let me re-log into this on the, unless somebody else has a question while I re-log in on my computer. Yeah, why don't, why don't you do that and we'll come back. We'll come back to yours, James, because we can definitely help you with that. I, I just, I'm trying to find out, gather where you're at. Right, right. And it's because Michael and I work in the same office. We've had the same experience. So um, it's easier for us to see what you're seeing. Yeah, well, let me reconnect. Whenever I first started using this, I had, you had, I had to select the um, like a different item from the drop down, not, not the one that would have the list of states. It, I can't think of it without seeing his screen. Seeing it. There's like three things and these that and then on the second drop down it's something that, that's where you see okay ellen the, you're, you're the nerds but he when he logs on and he shares his screen let's um remind us because yes michael and i haven't done it in a while so we'll watch for him to log back in one second switching over to my computer awesome we're good well, teams is switching anybody else have anything that we can help with. <clears throat> when the forms are changed, are they like year, like like right now? Some of them are 2019, 20. Like, will, will they automatically go into? Okay. Yes. So what's happening with our region is um, each market center is responsible for paying a fee and then the forms will automatically be updated by DocuSign and it will just be like a little fairy comes overnight and drops them in there and you'll be good to go. However, we are in a little bit of a holding pattern right now. Um, our regional tech leader, um, Kelly Finnegan, is diligently working and reminding DocuSign that we do need these forms in North Carolina. Our grace period, I believe, is through midway through August. So we um, are certainly on top of it. However, it's just taking a little bit of time for those to appear, but they will automatically update those for us. I had a question. The section that says insight, what is that section insight pertaining to? Like, what would we use that for? Um, in command? Yeah. Okay, just a second. Let's. Yeah. 
Okay, so you should be back to seeing my command, correct? Okay, so if you come down here to insights, um, this honestly has been something that has been, to my, in my experience, mostly um, used using the Kelly app. And what you can do in the Kelly app is you can identify a location or a neighborhood, a restaurant, and you can make a comment about it. And then eventually when people are searching using the Keller Williams app, they'll be able to see things that are in the same area of the property that they like. Yeah, my take on, on the whole insights, I know there was a push when it was first uh, first launched to get everybody to get the insights in. And I think that was just from a data capture standpoint. So I think what will happen with this portion of it eventually is it's going to be integrated into, like Christy was saying, into the KW app portion of it to be, again, to get that next level consumer experience. I just they haven't done a whole lot with it outside of the collecting. So we haven't seen what that's going to look like just yet. But again, that's my, my take on what's going to happen eventually. But um, again, it's kind of that, just like the other part of the Kelly app, it's kind of been put on the back burner because of some of the other issues that they've been, that they've been working on, so. And I typed in my home address so that you could see, um, these are things that are in my area. And so my, my understanding is when a client were to use the Keller Williams app and type in a property address, they could also see what's in their, that same area. So the restaurants, um, pediatricians, dental um, offices, things like that. And then you'll see there are also neighborhoods that are specified. Um, so that's, like Michael said, it's kind of been put on the back burner, but that gives you a, a little bit of an overview. I mean, is there any advantage for us to make a review on, on a business? I, mean, I don't think it's something that's gonna hurt anything. Um, you'll see I'm down here. Um, I had done my neighborhood, which is Hadley Place. Um, it, at some level, I think it is going to populate so that people can see the agents that have identified and made these insights. So I honestly, when it first came out, it was one of the first steps of our technology, even before command was really up and running. And so I just went ahead and you know, snapped a few photos when I was taking my daughter to the dance studio or going to Chick-fil-A and, and I would go ahead and tag them. So um, again, you can do it through your Kelly app, which is that teal one that has the KW. And um, it's, you know, a little something that you can do. <laughs> and you can just put, put or uh, touch the part that says, um, local insights for nearby and touch the plus that's beside it and then you can add an insight there so should we have the insight my insight button toggle button up at the top should we have that on or off the insight button at the top of i think that's just to show oh. yours versus everybody's so if you want to see just the ones that you've done it allows you to kind of show to toggle between the two. Yes. Sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't see that because I had your, your pictures there. Um, <laughs> so yes, you can see there are two that I did. If I click over and take that off, then it's gonna show the ones that other agents have done as well. Thanks. Sure. James, are you back with us? Yeah. Awesome. I'm gonna stop sharing. If you can go ahead and click on the share screen option. And we'll see if we can help you out. You see it? Yes. Yes, we are good. Okay, so I didn't have anything in my documents because I've never signed into this before. Went to rooms. Do, 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 it's going really slow. And then go to one second, I need to move these. Documents. Yep. Add DocuSign forms, realtor. Did you ask? Okay, yeah, hold up. Click okay, here. It will take yeah, you. Hit the, yeah, hit the key. Cancel again. I would, did you, have you tried clicking the continue to company forms without validation on the right? Yeah, that's what I did yesterday and it worked. Yep. I was going to say that. 
So now hit the select library, close that out. There you go. That should be all your forms right there. Oh shit, man. <laughs> there you go. That's what we're here for, James. That NARDS is tricky. It's yeah. like I said, at the very beginning, we were required to do it um, in North Carolina. And unfortunately, it's still, it's still popping up. It's not required now. Yeah, I kind of thought that this was where we were, were going to end up at. But again, just being able to not, I, I can't just talk through it. I, again, it was one that we just kind of had to show you. So yeah, so what, what I was planning to do is create that room and then go through and just fill out all of the listing documents and do like a default version. And then I could just copy them over to whenever I have a specific client in another room. Doesn't work like that. Sure, um, you can do that. So if you go ahead and select just two of those randomly. Uh, listing agreement. Where the hell's a listing agreement? Actually, let's just do respite for now. Wait, you said two. Let me add another one. Does it matter if it's two or just one? No, you're good. Just, just one's fine. If you click in that box in the upper left-hand corner in the circle, I mean, it's going to give you the option with that menu. You can do copy, which is, I think, the first one on the left. Yeah. Click that. And then you, sorry about my zinging in the background here. I'm getting blown I don't, up. Apparently messages. I don't yeah, have permissions. About school. Um, okay, so what you'll be able to do then is click a new room to add it right to that next room. Wait, where? Because when I click copy, it won't let me. I think you don't. Oh, you know why? Oh, hang on. I was going to say, I didn't think that we could do, do it that way. But again, that's my lack of experience using the, just the DocuSign platform. I don't think you can copy the form. Uh, try the one beside it. Try move. I try what? Move? Yes. Gotcha. So then you could just do another room or my docs, maybe. Uh-huh. That might be a way for you to to work around that. But again, I don't think that, I don't know if it's, it's going to take it yeah, out. I, again, on this, and I'm sorry, I didn't catch who was, who's, uh, if this is, if this is still you, James. Um, that is. The, yeah, the, the whole, which state are you in? North Carolina. Okay. Uh, my recommendation, and again, we're not, we, we're not uh, permitted to do this training for zip forms, but when it comes to templates, that's where we use, uh, Christy and I both, um, because we can create the templates and then be able to pull them for the transaction each and every time, the same information. So you already have a, half the information that never changes pre-selected. Unfortunately, DocuSign doesn't have it like that. You can get some of that done through your market center and have it in the drop-down tab, but not everything that's going to be specific to you, your license number, your everything like that. So um, yeah. again, um, my recommendation is talk to your, uh, your tech trainer, and have them instruct on using zip form plus because it in it's a huge time saver but again i don't want to go down that rabbit hole with with the whole group because i not everybody has that option and i brought that up as a, a a regional tech trainer to the the tech trainer group and we are looking at getting someone to do a regional training for North Carolina specifically, because we do have the zip forms as a, a, free, servi a free service. And so just keep, um, keep an eye on the Carolina region's tech Facebook. And then also, like Michael said, your tech trainer will get notification of that. And um, that training will hopefully happen in the next couple of weeks. I brought it up as being an important piece for those of you that are in Ignite. Uh, to answer Darlene's question, when I use Zip Form Plus, it looked like another command where you have to add a transaction. Yeah, it is sort of like that from the standpoint that, um, you know, to get the form information, you have to you have to have that in in there. But again, it, it, it's a time saver from the standpoint that you don't have the duplicate piece. But again, to each their own. If you'd prefer doing it, you know, through through DocuSign, um, that's absolutely up to you. I'll use whichever one's easier. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I thought we had talked about last week trying to be able to um, briefly test zip, using zip forms and Ignite. Um, are you guys able to, to, to give us a brief rundown? We are not. I'm sorry. Um, I, I highly recommend you just reach out directly to your tech 
coordinator in your office or your broker in charge for that help because we're doing this as a region and we have so many users that are on from South Carolina that do not have the access to zip forms. It's not something that um, we're permitted to cover at this point. But again, we are working on doing a regional training and we'll keep that as, um, as close to you know the next two weeks in July and get that out to you as quickly as possible. But in the meantime, I would lean on your on your office a little bit for that. I'll have a license in South Carolina, so I'm probably going to just take the docus on. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, is there a way that we can move the picture from the other, um, you know, there's two Keller Williams sites, uh, websites that we can use as um, an agent for like our website. I like the picture that's on the one. Is there a way that I can move that picture onto the other Keller Williams website I have? Is the picture the, the one that you like? Is it also in command or no? No. Okay, so it may be a picture that's tied um, to your account from the back office, possibly through the white pages. So I would check with your market center um, accountant, your MCA, to see if they can help you with making that update. Okay, when you say MCA, I don't really know who you're referring to. Is that the tech person? Your MCA is your market center accountant. Basically, okay. who cuts your checks? Gotcha, <laughs> yeah. This is where I usually go. And, and your, your tech trainer may be able to help you with it as well. Um, Sometimes the market center accountant, the MCA, has access to a little bit more information. I know last week there was a question about a license number change, like if an agent were to sign on and not have had passed their exam and didn't have their license number yet and it needed to be updated, that type of thing is done through um, the White Pages directory, which is kind of like our Keller Williams phone book. And that's um, where the market center accountant or MCA would be able to help you. So those would be the two sources I would go to. Uh, we have a question in the chat and Christy, maybe you have uh, some insight on this. I know there's some options, but I haven't messed with it a whole lot. Is there a way to put our leads first when we pull up our contacts? Hmm, so sorting by leads specifically, unfortunately, it's not going to default to it every time that you log in, but you can filter by it. So I went under contacts on the left with the two people icon. Oops, and I just got <laughs> booted out. Um, so let's try to log back in. Let's see if this works. If you look here in the center of my screen, you'll see there's a filters option. And if you click on that, it will give you the option to filter just by leads. And we'll see if it's gonna stay this time. If it's not, I'm sorry, but that is where you can select that. Yep, kicks you out again. I don't know what's, why that one's being difficult. Not sure why I'm getting booted. And I think this is the type of thing that a lot of people get so frustrated with because it is technology and it's not going to ever be 100% um, a well-oiled machine. We're going to get pretty close to well-oiled machine, but with they're doing any kind of maintenance or anything like that, um, it can cause you to have these little bugs and glitches um, and you just have to come with grace and patience and then try again later. So yeah, I'm totally not able to log in. Um, Michael, I'm gonna stop sharing and see if maybe okay. you can log in and yeah, get yours. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, I was in, I'll see what happens. The um, other option that you can do is when you are, when you open your contacts and you have all the contacts in columns, if you go under or go on top of the name, you can also sort them by first and last name alphabetically. And that can help you if you're doing any kind of tagging. Um, I know some of you had talked about this the other day too, about tagging your contacts for doing lead generation. And so you can sort by those tags, you can sort by um, the name and sort them by their first and last names as well. 
Yeah, Christy, I'm having the same issue as well. There must be a system-wide issue. One of the things I recommend, especially, you know, obviously most of, most of you folks are in, in here are newer as well. Um, if, if you're having an issue, one of the things, if you've got a, an agent that you partner with that you're close to or a Facebook group or whatever, a lot of times if you throw it out there, sometimes, you know, it's not necessarily a user specific. It's a system-wide issue. We've had that happen a couple of times where, you know, somebody needed to get into DocuSign and couldn't, and it was, uh, you know, there was a system-wide outage. It wasn't just something agent specific. So um, it doesn't hurt to ask, ask a friend or the group or something along those lines, just like Christy did in this situation. She had an issue, didn't know if it was specific to her. I mean, obviously, if it, it duplicates between a couple different people, then there's something more to it than just uh, something that's just on your end or, or a, maybe a misstep on your side. And in this instance, it was nothing that anybody did wrong. So it looks like we are um, at a stopping point with command because it is not letting I try to D -D -O -A. <laughs> completely log out, log back in, um, open a new browser, and it's um, obviously taking a little bit of a time out. So we're happy to answer any questions. We might just be limited on how much we can show. And you, again, are welcome, like James, to go ahead and share your screen, let us look at what you're seeing, and be able to help you that way. I'm going to go back through the chat and make sure that there was nothing that was missed. Okay, awesome. And just a, as a little bit of a reminder, um, our favorite places to go for command trainings um, are Marty Miller on YouTube, Scott Leroy, which some of the market centers do work directly with Scott Leroy and have a relationship with his group and they are able to help you perform actions, even like adding testimonials to your agent website, um, adding contacts into your database, things like that. And then of course, using the command your business page from KW and then searching on answers.kw.com for any questions as well. And I know those have all been covered, but just kind of a reminder. Yeah, as well, I, I, I get a lot of uh, agents that come to me with issues and I'll be honest, I don't have all the answers. There's just so much in this, in, in what we do um, that I just, I personally don't, I'm not super fluid with every piece of this. There's some that I use a lot that I'm super, you know, versed in and others that I'm not. So one of the things that I always do when I have an agent come to me, first thing, I'll usually just Google the issue and see if there's something on there that can kind of direct me down that path to kind of see what maybe what the issue is there. Because there's just so much out there, KW command and whatever is a DocuSign or you know, whatever the, the issue may be, it, you can look at that as well. That's usually step one, <laughs> troubleshooting, other than, other than reset. <laughs> and, and you said that command your business page is one resource. Where do you, where do you find that at? Sure. So. That one you can show. I sure can, and it should work just fine. <laughs> it's, it, it's a... Sorry, I have your, I have my um, control panel over my um, Google search. So I want to show you, you can just type that in as a Google search and you'll find it. It's from... KW Connect, which is that my KW page. So again, you can just Google search it and it will come up that way. You can also go to my KW. Sorry, I clicked. I did not mean to click right there. Um, and I believe it's under Education. A couple of the hospitals we go to quite often. Hmm. I don't remember this way. I, I usually just Google it. And no, that's the yeah. Again. That's the. Well, I'm sorry. I don't remember where to find it there. So um, it is under. Okay, just Google. Next. 
Good, thanks. Yeah, um, there's the, the website. I'll put it in the chat room so you can copy and paste it if you want to bookmark it. Thanks. Uh-huh, sure. Any other questions, guys? Have a few more minutes yet? Seven. And this, if you, um, yeah, sorry. No, go ahead. Um, I was just going to say, if you haven't looked at the tech enabled agent, um, this is a great new piece of technology that just rolled out recently where you can see some specific topics that you want to explore. So again, it's on that same command your business page. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, where would I find the forms to represent a tenant? Not the landlord, but a tenant. Because I've noticed a lot of postings recently where you can get like 10% of a year's rent or 10% of a month's rent. Are you, um, which state are you in? North Carolina. I believe they're under the North I'm Carolina. I'm looking under NCAR right now on DocuSign. And you're not finding a, a rental agreement? Nope. Looks like everything's for landlords or a termination of a right to lease. Um, oh, it's been a long time since I've done Damn. one. <laughs> I, let me, let me poke around a little bit. I'm thinking that you may, uh, I'm not 100% sure I know. Um, let me poke around for a minute and I'll see if I can remember. Um, but if I, if I, I'm not able to remember, a broker in charge would certainly be able to answer that for you. Gotcha. Anything else while she's looking, in, uh, looking into that one a little bit further? Any other questions, comments, feedback? I'm gonna check back to see if uh, see if things are back up and running yet on command nope, just keep kicking me out so back to it in chat no that's the wrong one so there's like I think what two more days left for first level ignite. How do you guys feel the the content that you've been getting? Has it been worth your time? Things that have been beneficial, uh, things maybe from a feedback standpoint that you you have not found value out of anything like that. Last couple of days, definitely. I found it by the way. It's um, it's an exclusive buyer tenant agency agreement. Looks like. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. That's it. Yes, uh, comment from the chat, uh, very beneficial, but overwhelming. Um, yeah, as you're, as you're onboarding, it is like drinking from the fire hose. Uh, take in what you can, but realize that you're not going to be able to drink it all. And just the, the key point, I think, is just kind of realizing where the resources are at to go back to in the event that you, you, know, you, didn't, you didn't catch all of that. Because again, we're, we're getting a lot of content and, and uh, on a lot of different levels. Um, but uh, again, continue to grind because the longer you do it, the more comfortable you'll get doing it. Trust me. I love, I love the dashboard and I love like the, how everyone helps out too. Like in the, when we're going through Ignite, you have people that have been here or um, been other places as a new agent. That's really helpful because resource, I need help navigating things, but having like so many other people you can turn to when this person, you know, they're like a whole bunch of mini Logans around, <laughs> but I do love, I mean, I've learned a lot and I'm still learning a lot from Ignite. So I'm so glad I took the opportunity to join this. Awesome. Yeah, that's one of the things that's certainly the culture of Keller Williams is that everybody's always learning and everybody's always sharing and teaching. And I hope some of you will build some relationships through this and are able to lean on each other, even as new agents. And oftentimes you'll hear of partnerships that develop with um, script role play and agents will jump on um, a couple times a week or even every day with another agent and, and practice some things or um, just help answer some questions and share ideas. So um, know that 
it's always good to ask questions because there's usually somebody who's going to know the answer, but there's always somebody who can help you find out the answer. Um, I did add in the chat room again, I know this is like beating a dead horse for us that are um, helping run the Ignite sessions, but the daily reporting link and both um, the daily reporting link and the instructor evaluation I put in the chat room again, just asking again that if you have not completed those today that you do go ahead and do that. Um, we are asked to tell you at least four times a session, which I think we've definitely covered. And um, if there isn't anything else, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up for today. And our team from our office is gonna be joining you one more time this month. And some of you might be moving over to the elementals, which is something that you can talk to your market center leadership with. Um, so you'll certainly be seeing us again next week on Friday the 24th. Great. Thank you so much, Christy. You really went at a really good pace, and I really appreciate all your explanations. Absolutely, sure. And Michael and I will hang. If you have anything else, um, let us know. If not, you're, you're welcome to go and grab yourself some lunch. <laughs> I did Mine's have... getting cold behind us. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Christina. I did have one question, but um, I don't know if you want to try to tackle it the next time you're back, but um, is there a way from our website that we can send a client a list of homes that they're interested in instead of, you know, like you can do it in MLS. Like I thought somebody had showed me before how you, how she did it, but, um, and I thought it was from her website, but now I can't figure out how to do it. I know how to do it in MLS though. Um, I honestly have only ever used MLS. What's your first name? Mine, Susie. Oh, Susie, okay. Um, I'm gonna add that just so when you get um, recorded for today that you have record of having a first name. Michael, have you done anything from your website? I've only ever done yeah, it from yeah. MLS. Yeah, I'm, 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 I wanna see if mine loads right now. If so, I'll do a screen share quick and, and show how I've done it in the past. So, uh, yep, it looks like I'm good. Let me come back to the screen share. Um, so essentially, I'm gonna to go to it right now. Here's my website. Um, I'm gonna do something pretty simple just not to, uh, again, uh, take up a, a bunch of time, but for instance, um, current location. Uh, great, it's not showing it. So let's just do this. Um, you go through and uh, once you select the area, obviously here's some of your toggles of your price that you can, you can change. I think it's been a bit since I've done this, so I, I do apologize. But I have done it once before, um, a couple of different times. Yeah, this one's a little, little bit better. Shows you can go through and and pick out some of these, um, and you can multi-select here. I'm gonna go back to that price point. I don't know. I trying to remember how. Oh, it's I, I couldn't see. It. I apologize. It was too it was too white. Didn't. There wasn't enough distinction um, and so forth. So once you go through that and then all I've done then once I once you select those is just copy and paste this URL. Um, I've done that with some some Facebook marketing. Uh, for instance, um, I, I did one before where back when we were having events, like I, I would just post a link to the event and then below that I would say for for uh, homes in this neighborhood at under 250 or something along those lines and just put a link behind that, beside that. So I was announcing the activity and in addition, you know, touching the real estate portion of it as well. And then again, it's just as simple as a copy and paste of this URL. And the other thing that you can do, I'm not gonna go into it today because it's, it's, it, it's a bit long, um, but if you use like Bitly, you can take this long URL and put it into something short. So like I was able to convert the address into uh, something that was like bit.ly slash Durham under 250 or something along those lines and be able to just put that short little link in there. Um, but then the cool part about it is, is then it's driving the traffic back to your website, not to, you know, just an email thing. So again, it's giving your website some traffic. So that's uh, Susie, that's how I've used it in the past. Again, it's been a bit, so I'm sorry, I was a little bit rusty on it, 
but that's one way that you can you can do that and just copy paste and use the bit.ly link um, to drive traffic to your website but it was a great question great thanks i appreciate it hope you have a good day yeah absolutely you as well and sandra i I think you're still on. Um, if you're listening, I saw that you had asked the question that kind of got lost in the chat there about elementals. What will happen is you will continue using the same link to log into Ignite. Um, and when there's a breakout for the Spark lesson, you will continue to do lead genning because the model is that you lead gen for two hours a day. So you would do lead gen from nine to 11, come back on for the technology piece, and then there will be an elementals lesson that runs from one o'clock to two o'clock. And so that elementals lesson will be for folks who have completed the first um, session of Spark with Ignite and have set an appointment. And again, that's something that you can chat with leadership for, but um, the short answer is your lesson will just run from one to two o'clock. And at the beginning of the day, everyone will still be together. Yeah, I was just wondering if you wanted to retake some of those Spark sessions, if you have to sign up again, or can you just jump in? Um, what we've gone through for the past two weeks. Uh, say that again, what's your question? If I wanted to repeat some of the things we've gone through for the past two weeks, could I just come back and take some of the sessions? Oh yeah, you're welcome to do that. You can just use the same link and log back in. Okay, all right, good. Thank yeah, you. that's the nice part about it that you can just drop into the ones that you've missed. Like for me, for instance, you know, I was going through the through it as well, and I, I was very good on a couple of days, and then I had appointments and so forth on some of the other days I just wasn't able to attend. So I'm going to drop back into those ones on the days, uh, those days that I missed. All right. So the same Zoom link. I'm sorry. What? Could you, I'm sorry. Could you repeat that if I could drop back in? Because my phone's been going and I've missed a couple of things. And um, would, how do I do that? How do I drop back into this? Are you talking about dropping back into this today? Uh, no, we're talking about the future. So I'll revisit today's in a minute. So for... The next um, following couple of weeks that we're running this, it will be the same Zoom link that we have been using, and um, you'll just use it to come back through, Sandra. So I see this is being recorded. We can't have access to the recordings? So uh, that's my next thing. I was just going to make sure that she was <laughs> good on that answer. Um, we do have this recorded. And it is up to your market center leadership to be able to share that with you. It's not something that we are publicly putting out at this point. But if you reach out to your tech trainer in your office or someone from leadership, they will be able to help by sharing it to you via email. Okay, that's fine then. Thank you. Sure. And then that helps if you were having some trouble specifically on today, um, you can specify which days you're looking for and just receive those ones individually. Perfect. You and Michael have been wonderful. I just thank, thank you. you so much. Oh, well, good. I'm so glad. Yeah, I love working with Michael. We seem to be able to balance each other really well when it comes to these types of things. Very informative. I just need to practice. And, and what was your cell phone number again, Christy and Michael? No. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, um, practice, practice certainly helps make it permanent. Um, I know when I first started with commands and I was an experienced agent, I had the switch over. Um, I practiced, I think I did three test runs. And then when I sat down to do that first official paperwork for my client, I was lost and I had to go back and pull my notes up and go through it again. And one of the things that is challenging is you're learning it now, but you may not use it for three or four days. And so for me, it just got put in the back of my mind. So it honestly is the more you do it, um, the practice makes permanent. I hope to do it a lot. That's, That's the goal. <laughs> you were saying the hours for the elemental class will um, go till two o'clock? Yes, so elementals will have a, a lesson session. So instead of having the spark session that runs in the morning, which Grace taught today from 10 to 11, the people who are in elementals will 
continue doing lead gen from 10 to 11, and then the elementals lesson will actually take place from one o'clock to two o'clock. And again, like, like Christy was saying, you know, the, the idea behind this is, is, is building the habit of starting your day with script practice, and then, and then obviously then, you know, having the, the lesson part will, will, will be lead gen time for, and then obviously it'll be one big session at that point. But again, it's that, it's the habit of the lead gen, the script practice, and then the learning piece and, and fitting those to within your day is, is you know, what the objective is. And that starts next Monday, what, the elements? Yeah, Correct. elementals, yes, on the 20th, that's right. And we don't have to print out anymore. We're using the same scripts and things like that. There's no more paperwork or? Um, I believe everything you'll need is in those materials, but I'm not 100%. I have not looked that far ahead yet, Jay. Okay, okay. thank you. Same. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, have a good day. Thank you. I'm gonna go yeah. ahead and end the meeting because I have some legwork to do to record who was here today and those types of things. Um, so again, You'll have instructors on tomorrow, but we'll look forward to seeing you again at the end of next week. Take care, guys. Thank you. Right, have a good one. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks so much for participating and joining in with us.